My name is Jonathan Spitek. I'm an attorney with the Shannon Law Group, and we help people uh, recover compensation when they experience an injury or a side effect due to a vaccination. We do this by filing a petition in the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. So if you were born before 1994, or if you were exposed to the hepatitis virus, maybe a good reason to go get a hepatitis vaccine. And when you're an adult, these vaccines are administered intramuscularly in your upper arm. Most of the time, you're not gonna feel any side effects, any significant pain. Uh, at most, you might have some swelling or redness at the injection site, may experience some uh, you know, slight fever symptoms, but these are gonna dis dissipate over the course of the next one to two days. In rare instances, you may experience significant shoulder pain, and uh, this pain won't go away in one to two days. You're gonna experience some range of motion issues and some strength deficits. And you're probably wondering, you know, could this be caused by the hepatitis vaccine? And the answer, unfortunately, is uh, yes. It's known as CERVA, or Shoulder Injury Related to Vaccine Administration. When we talk about CERVA, what we're talking about is an injury to your shoulder joint. What happens is the vaccine is administered either too high up in your shoulder or at the wrong angle, and it causes inflammation of the tendons, the ligaments, or the bursa within your shoulder, which results in pain, loss of range of motion, decreased strength. And what we would expect to see in a CERVA case is pain in that shoulder within 48 hours of receiving the vaccine. And if the pain doesn't go away, we would recommend that you go see your doctor as soon as possible to get it properly diagnosed and treated. When you go to your doctor, you're most likely, uh, whether it's a primary care doctor or a specialist, they'll perform a physical examination and, and test you know, the strength of your shoulder, the range of motion. And um, although they might not diagnose you specifically with CERVA, what we're looking for is a diagnosis along the lines of shoulder inflammation. So tendonitis, bursitis, a rotator cuff injury, impingement syndrome, adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. These are the things that you know, we look for in a CERVA case. Now, regardless of what your diagnosis is, the treatments are relatively the same. First, you're gonna be started out on either pain medications or anti-inflammatories. You will most likely undergo a course of physical therapy to see if you can kind of regain that strength or range of motion in your shoulder. You may be eligible for a uh, cortisone shot injection, um, which sometimes coincides with physical therapy that, to, to help you make those gains. And if all these conservative uh, methods of treatment fail, uh, the last resort would be to do a surgery to repair uh, the damage in your shoulder joint. If you believe that you've experienced an injury or a side effect due to a vaccine, there's a legal option that you might not be aware, aware about called the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. It's a government-funded program that provides compensation to individuals who've experienced an injury or side effect to, due to a list of covered vaccines. So first, some basic requirements. Uh, in order to be eligible to file in this program, you have to file your petition for compensation sooner than three years after the onset of your vaccine injury symptoms. It's called the statute of limitations. If you were injured by a vaccine more than three years ago, then your petition would be time barred by the statute of limitations. Second basic requirement is that the symptoms of your injury have to persist for at least six months before you become eligible for compensation. Another basic requirement is that you have to have received the vaccine in the United States with some limited exceptions. And finally, you have to have re received a vaccine that's covered by the program. They cover most of the vaccines that uh, are routinely administered to children and adults. However, there are some vaccinations that are excluded from the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. So assuming you meet all of these basic requirements, you can file a petition alleging that you experience an injury or a side effect due to a vaccine. Once your petition has been filed, uh, the court will assign it to a judge. And during this process, your petition um, must be 
supported by evidence. And the most critical kind of evidence to a petition is the medical records. Medical records is gonna help establish when your symptoms um, started in relation to the vaccine, what your diagnosis is, um, and how long your symptoms persist. Your petition will be reviewed by not only the court, but also a representative from the Department of Health and Human Services. And that's who ultimately is going to decide whether or not they are conceding or disputing your entitlement to compensation. Now, if they find a reason to dispute your case, it doesn't mean that you're denied compensation. It just means that you now have to go in front of the judge and resolve that dispute. And the judge can decide that he agrees with the government and, and deny you entitlement to compensation, or he can say that, yes, you are entitled to compensation. The other way to get your case approved is if the government just concedes that you experienced an injury or side effect due to a vaccine. Now, a good way of knowing whether or not you're going to be entitled to compensation is whether your vaccine injury tracks with what we call the vaccine injury table. So there's a table that lists out the covered vaccinations, but it also lists injuries or conditions that are associated with those vaccines. So if you've experienced one of those injuries or conditions and you meet all the other criteria set forth on the table, then there's a presumption that that vaccine caused your injury. Now, usually in those instances, the government will concede uh, that you do have a vaccine injury and you'll move into the second phase of the program. The other ways to move into the second phase of the program is by convincing the judge that you meet that criteria. So once you've made it through that first phase, the second phase of the program is called the damages phase. And during that phase, we're trying to determine how much compensation or what kinds of compensation are you entitled to. And in general, there are three types. There are pain and suffering damages, and that is a uh, an amount of money that reflects you know, the, the pain that you went through, the severity of your injury, the length of time that you were treating for it, um, and the impact that it has on, on your daily life. There's also out-of-pocket medical expenses, so anything not covered by insurance, you know, co-pays, uh, co-insurance payments, things of, of that nature. And there's also lost earnings or income. So, if you had to miss time from work or use benefits that you wouldn't have otherwise, you can get reimbursed for those items as well. And all of these damages also have a future component to them. So if it comes time to resolve your case or if it comes time for the judge to decide you know, if you're entitled to compensation and you're still dealing with the effects of your injury, he or she can provide for future pain and suffering, future out-of-pocket expenses or future lost wages or income. Okay. Now this may seem complicated and it can be at times. Um, that's why we always recommend to get an attorney. And the number one reason I recommend to get an attorney is because it won't cost you anything. The program uh, will cover your attorney's fees and expenses. They will submit their own petition separate from your petition for compensation to reimburse them for their time and, and their expenses um, related to your case. So it's a great way to get you know, great legal representation um, and, and to help you navigate you know, the, sometimes the, the pitfalls that, that uh, can present themselves to you during the pendency of your case. The other reason I suggest getting an attorney is uh, you know, every once in a while you'll, you'll have a, a case where the government will strongly defend it, and uh, you may be required to get an expert. Um, and by hiring an attorney, you're more likely to find the expert that you need to, to help you succeed. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.